On episode 219 of the Tennis Files podcast, you'll learn about tennis-specific movement training and recovery with Dean Hollingworth. Welcome back to another episode of the Tennis Files podcast. This is Mirban Ranchide, your host. And today we have part two of my interview with Coach Dean Hollingworth. If you listened to last week's episode, then you'll know that Dean has well over 25 years of experience as a strength and conditioning coach, and he is a certified strength and conditioning specialist, a master tennis performance specialist by the ITPA, that's the International Tennis Performance Association, and he's part of Team PTR. He also has an online class that he hosts online tennis specific fitness training classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 o'clock Eastern, which you can access from anywhere in the world over the amazing internet. So definitely check that out by messaging Dean or contacting him, him on his website. And for this episode, for part two, we narrow down on three more big mistakes that tennis players make in their tennis fitness training. So I will not spoil them, but I will let you listen in on our interview to discover them. But first, my pun of the day. And you'll have to promise not to turn off this episode once you hear it. All right, here it goes. A lemon was playing a USTA match against an orange. After arguing over a few close calls, both the lemon and the orange agreed to find a neutral third party to call the balls in and out. Good thing there was a lime judge nearby. A lime judge? Got the lemon, the orange, and then the lime neutral party. You know, they say if you have to explain your joke, then it's not a good one, but uh, I don't know. I just explained it just in case. You probably got it. I know you're you're a smart person listening to a podcast such as this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed that one. And uh, <laughs> with that, we will kick it off to my interview with Dean. So a lot of great stuff in this one. So I hope that you make some notes on a piece of paper or at least in your brain if you're listening to it on the road or in the shower or wherever else. So without further ado, here is part two of my interview with Coach Dean Hollingworth. So let us go to number three. Okay. So this this is, you know, I I I did a whole movement thing for for the tennis files. I think it was two years ago. And I really enjoy working on court or on a soccer field or in an open area working on movement. And one of the things that has really gotten to me over the last few years is some of the stuff that people are putting out for movement that has Mm. nothing to do with anything. You know, I I watch the people put out cones and ladders and hurdles and just, it's like, it's like a, you know, they're just throwing it out there and where it lands, like, okay, we'll do this and we'll run over there. We'll do that. Now, if you're dealing with junior athletes, like really young little kids, fantastic. You know, you really want to be able to develop all their different type of motor skills. So you really want to challenge them. But when I start seeing mm-hmm. high level, you know, high level players, uh, you know, perform various drills that I cannot understand. And, I, you know, I, I'm at the point sometimes I think, okay, well, maybe you're just a little too jaded. So, you know, I'll call friends, that colleagues of mine and say, hey, did you see that? And they're like, oh, my God, can you, why are they mm. doing this? So I think the way we train a tennis athlete has to be pretty, um, you know, reflective of the sport. You know, like, I, I want to show you, I, I want to show, I definitely got to show some videos here. So, and I will describe sure. the videos um, for some, of, you yeah. know, for the people that that are um that are just listening so we're gonna yeah, go podcast, to right. this this video here this i call this bad cones or is this bad cones, bad or cones. Bad hurdles? it's usually when i get ice cream i get yeah. bad cones but this yeah. is different <laughs> yeah, it's taking its time loading here for some reason so can you see that maraban yeah if you just expand it no, i'm going to the, yeah. yeah so i'm just gonna, i'm gonna run it through so i'm just gonna let it run through and you know, just watch the the movement patterns here. I don't. You don't move like that. You don't <laughs> move 
you don't move, <laughs> you don't move like that on a tennis court. Like I'm just that's pretty cool. I'm <laughs> I'm glad you like it, but you know, like first of all, watch watch her split step here. She lands on both feet and then she takes off. And this uh -huh. cross, that's not a crossover. That's that's a gallop. That's crazy. You know, and yeah. then here we watch this change of direction. Now that's her change of direction. That can be much more efficient. Like I, I again, you know, and and we just play through. This is beautiful. This is what I love. Right She's here. jumping Ooh. over the cone here. Yeah, this is wow. Yeah, and going, and then another jump with another slot. Mm -hmm. You know what? <laughs> and then the last one here. Look at this. Wow. The, no one, no one does this on a tennis court. So <laughs> I'm losing my mind and, and, and getting, uh, you know, fl flustered with this, but that's the point. Um, that that's, that's truly the point is that we, we want this to be, um, really exercises that, that are beneficial to the athlete that are going to develop good motor patterns. And I don't think people understand. Well, you know, maybe she's not lifting her feet enough, or maybe she's doing this. Stop it, okay? It, 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 that's not the case at all. If, if you are teaching a motor sequence to an athlete, regardless if they do it well or not, they're learning something. And people have to understand this. So the coaches, you know, this coach that's encouraging this movement is teaching this young player bad motor patterns. And that's the bottom line. And anything you do is, is a teaching, is a, is, is a possible teaching event. So performing that, that drill over and over again you know, it, it, it's not, it, it might get you a lot of likes on Instagram because, oh, wow, you know, she's jumping around, bounding and all that, but it's, it's not the way to go. It, it's just not. And I'd like to share again, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. sure. Go yeah, for yeah, it. Thank you. Good. So, yeah. So like, basically, um, she is go. going to, you know, if she repeats that those movements enough times, she might end up like, you know, jumping around and galloping like that. And, uh, that's, that's kind of the risk, right? Well, yeah. I mean, listen, th this, this person is a high level tennis player. Um, mm, and yeah. I guess people could say, oh, you know, like, uh, you know, what do you know? She's, she's the, but yes, you're, you're starting to ingrain a pattern that is not effective. That has no purpose. Nobody moves like that on a tennis court. So we got to be very, very careful with that. And then, yeah. um, I'm just looking here. Sorry. So I didn't, I don't no have worries. the other one I wanted to share. I, I felt a little bad about sharing it because I didn't want anybody, um, knowing who it was. <laughs> I'm just being too nice, I guess tonight, but you know, I saw, <laughs> I saw this, I saw this whole drill put out and I'll, I'll just explain it where, first of all, when you don't have your athlete start in an athletic stance to split step, what are you doing? Like that mm. makes no sense to me when I see athletes starting like in a, you know, like a wide receiver on the line of scrimmage with one foot forward, one foot back and starting like that. Guys, I mean, if you're, if you're on the court, you're trying to imitate court movements, that that's strike number one, you know, and he, he'd have her jump over, over a, um, uh, you know, a, a pretty high hurdle, almost like a high hurdle, not, not like those little hurdles you're looking at and then go to a ladder and hit the ladder and do these little choppy steps on court. You know, mm. I, I, I've been on here and I've said this and I, I've, I've been on other podcasts and talked about this on how I'm not a big fan of, of, of a ladder and ladder training. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. know, it's not so much that I don't like the ladder. I had an epiphany about eight months ago and it's more how the coaches use it. Listen, you have young kids and they want to use the ladder. They love it. Knock yourself out. You know, the older adult that's lacking um, coordination, you know, and you just want to challenge them, fine, knock yourself out. Putting, putting a 16-year-old competitive tennis player in a ladder for five to 10 minutes is ridiculous. First of all, you have, you know, 
don't say it's a speed and agility ladder because it's not because the ladder does not help you with speed you want fast feet okay i guess you could argue you're going to get faster feet but if fast feet were the case guess what the the cast of river dance would be representing <laughs> ireland in the olympics okay they'd be the fastest people on the face of the planet you know you want to move quick feet you want to get the nervous system firing go wild use it but you know speed is 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 based on ground force reaction how how hard can you punch your foot into that ground not tapping like like your fred astaire and and this is what drives me nuts and then you see the kids that are using the ladders and they're on their tippy toes well no mm. no you you know like it's just this little tippy toe or having them run through Listen, placing your foot in each square perfectly. Listen, you want to do a crossover, hit the side, come back, fantastic. But use it properly and not just something that looks cool with, you know, for, for Instagram purposes. And then the, the thing with the, the, thing with, with, um, the hurdles was also, you notice as she came over the hurdle, if I'm teaching that, Hell yeah. She, if she has to move to her right, I'm going to have her split step to her right. So land, hit off the left leg and start that movement and get, and get, get to a better advantageous point of movement and, and, you know, gain as much ground as you can. I take the kids, I take so much pride in a, in a, in an athlete that shows up and can only gain X amount of you know, feet or meters to the right or left with one crossover to the point where they're getting to the singles line, like in under two crossovers. I think that's the important part is how can you take what we're doing, what we have to be doing on court and making it better within, within uh, the training context. Because, you know, a lot of times I might be all over the place. Feel free to rein me in here because I just might rant till No, you're doing great. But, <laughs> you're doing, <laughs> hey, you know what? I went to see Mark. I, I was at the same WTA event as Mark Kovacs. And Mark Kovacs stood oh, up. He get a, he get, yeah. He gave a presentation on movement and becoming, you know, more powerful, more explosive. You know how many foot drills were in there or feet drills or whatever? Zero, nothing. It was mm -hmm. about it was about being in the weight room. It was about plyometrics and applying learning how to be explosive and you know so be smart and just don't put out hurdles for the sake of doing it you know when you're doing hurdles and, and you're trying to be explosive be explosive don't jump up and look like a you know a wet bag of towels um you mm, know when disgusting. i watch <laughs> it's just because they were washed they weren't used or anything um okay <laughs> When, when I watch the athletes and the coach is going, oh, good, good. Yeah, that's nice. I'm like, they're going half speed. Now, mm. listen, if you're trying to develop power, you can't go half speed. You have to give. That's one of the things about give 100%. Be explosive. Learn that explosiveness, you know. Um, yeah. And then the cones, you know, one thing that gets me going with cones, when you see the athletes shuffling around them and everything, and they lift up a leg to go around the cone, mm. uh, you, you don't lift up a leg like that on, on a court. Or, or when you see a, a coach doing a drill feeding and the athlete has to run forward, hit the ball, and then shuffle all the way around the coach and back, you don't do that on a court. You, you, you wouldn't... You wouldn't do that. You why? Why are you doing that in practice? So having drills that are specific to the sport, applying them properly, not just throwing a bunch of you know fifteen different exercises onto the court. Again, I will give a pass for the junior athletes that need to be really challenged. But if if you're you know a competitive player, you, you want to be able to move in a competitive way. Got it. So basically, if if somebody's telling you to do a movement that isn't something you'd be doing on the court at at the that particular time, then you just want to scrap it, basically. You know, I want my athletes to learn that in no in no matter what scenario they find themselves on a court, they're able to get out of it. So that means if you end up to the outside, um, you know, the singles doubles line, you've hit a ball. How can you reposition your body to get back to center? Not, not, not go through a ladder and then come back again. So yes, I, I would agree with that.
Now, just to play devil's advocate, which I'm sure you're going to, you know, tear up this uh, this counterpoint here. It's not really a counterpoint, but I'm trying to imagine like what the coaches are, uh, like how they're trying to justify it. Is there any, you know, credence to the argument that, well, like, OK, they're not that's not a movement that they're doing uh, in a match or in practice, but it like develops some other part of their physical capabilities. Like, is that yeah? I mean, any, does that have any justification? Listen, of course, y- you can put some justification again with the younger kids. But if you're 16 years old now and and you really have to work on those patterns, we're behind. We're behind. You know, mm, and it's I, not efficient. I, it's not efficient. Let's just get them good at what they're supposed to do, but in every possible way. You know, one of the things that I started doing this year is, you know, every time you see a speed and agility drill or like a, a, a speed drill, uh, and it, you know, everybody, it's always go faster, go faster, go faster. Correct? All right. Would mm-hmm. you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So one thing that I'm trying to do this year is with our movement patterns is, okay, let's do this one fast, but come back and then slow it down because that's more of a representative way of how we move on court. You know, the amount of times mm-hmm. you see uh, anybody sprinting for balls, it happens. But most, most of the movement patterns are nice control movement patterns, hitting the ball with great force. I mean, what that study shows, there was a study, I forget who, who did it, but 70% of the balls are within two to 2.5 meters within the person of, of their bubble. I mean, get good mm-hmm. at that bubble. I mean, then the other 30%, okay, you work on that, but 70%, you'd want to be able to, to nail that every time, no? Yeah, 100%, man, yeah. 100%. Um, this is a great one about, you know, sticking to tennis specific movements uh any other last thoughts slash rants before we move on to the next one yeah and you know what and i think coaches coaches have to take videotape have to videotape Mm. their athletes doing doing the the work because i'm telling you right now you may not see everything that you think you're seeing you know I, i i had this discussion with a colleague going you know we all know the drills you know Everybody knows that you should know most of the drills or know at least enough good ones that you can help a player advance. So what makes it so different between someone that's being more successful with somebody than is it? And I really think it's the coach. I really think it's the cueing. I think it's the observation. It's how you relate to the athlete. It's taking video. I mean, let's, let's face it. I mean, you want, I, I believe in detail. I mean, it's all in the details. The, the, the more we can get that specific. I mean, listen, movement is about a, can you get into position? Can you get into that position? If you can't, you better learn how. <coughs> Sorry, <laughs> don't choke that. No, but you have to be able to get into position. Can you replicate those movement patterns? And if you can't, then you have to. Then you can start putting an element of power. And then the big thing is up here. We have to get the athletes activated. <coughs> Sorry, mm-hmm. a little break here. No problem. Yeah, yeah. Because that's 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 power. That's movement. That's power. The brain. Can your brain stimulate your nervous system enough to make it as efficient as it wants to be to recruit all those muscles that need to be used? I, I think that's. That's really big. I, you know, it is the building block. Can you get into position? If you can't, okay, you need to find someone that's going to help you with where your your lack of mobility is for, you know, lack of mobility and stability. Do you know how to do those movement patterns? I want to share this with you, please, okay? Sure, yeah. You don't Go have a choice. <laughs> nice. Damn. Nice. Yeah. All so, right, we're sharing a video here. Yeah, sharing a video here. So this is this is an 18-year-old player I was working with. And I want you to watch her left foot when she when she comes out of her split step here. I'm gonna is it it should watch the lead foot. Watch what she yep. does. See how she taps, mm-hmm. and then she brings it underneath. That's not efficient. Mm-hmm. You know, right. you tap and go. We don't we don't want to see that. And same thing on the other side. So a lot of pe- a lot of athletes do do that where they tap. Because they're reaching, or you'll notice her foot is not where it should be. It should have been brought underneath a little more. The left foot should have been driving off more. So she's headed in the mm-hmm. direction she wants to go. 
but she had a really yeah. hard time with this because she, she'd been doing this for many, many years. So what did we do to correct this? This ain't rocket science. I just had her lean, lift her foot and drive off. Lean, mm. lift her foot and drive off. And now I'm going to let it play through and it cleans it up quite nicely. Now she went yeah. pretty slow, but you have to be able to walk before you can run. And I think that was really, that was eye opening to me. And I take video of, you know, of all my athletes when we're training, I try to as, as much as possible, take video of them and, yep. and then show it to them because that that's huge. They're like, I'm doing that. You know, I'm, I'm corkscrewing my big toe into the ground to start my lateral movement or, or I'm, I'm pulling like, uh, a Michael Jackson where you're almost like moonwalking that first step and then running. So that, that was, yeah. And I, I, yeah, no great observations, great fixes. And yeah, I mean, videotaping yourself is, is so eye opening, uh, and it, it can be very, uh, budget friendly as well. I mean, a lot of solutions, even if you don't have somebody to hold the camera for you, I mean, you can get like a, a mount that like mounts over the tennis fence and you can get like a GoPro. They, they sell pretty inexpensive ones. Um, so definitely encourage you to do that. So Dean, you know, I, I'm not sure how many you, you, you know, prepared for today, how many you want to get into, but I assume you have another one for us. Yeah, we have one more. And the last thing I'm going to say about that, that I think a lot of coaches where there's a lot of mistakes is where they Coaches take uh, movement drills, if you want to call it speed and agility drills, and turn it into conditioning drills. I think that's a mm. big, big mistake. Yeah. You know, running, you know, when you have a condition, um, a conditioning drill, when you have a agility drill that lasts for 20 seconds, just relax, okay? Uh, and give, <laughs> give the athletes enough time to rest. I mean, if you're going to work on sprints and sprint mechanics, which I do, and I know some people are rolling their eyes, but I think it's it's important because it teaches great ground force reaction, but you got to give them at least a one to five, one to 10 work to rest ratio. I mean, don't, don't have them just keep going. So you really want them, uh, you really want them well rested and fresh. Yeah. The last, last thing, last, last thing, this is, <clears throat> this is, this I find probably more in tennis than other sports is people balancing on BOSUs, trying to, mm. uh, throw a medicine ball or get some good, uh, uh, get some good power <clears throat> development uh, for their swing and their shots. And, and, you know, there was, there was a great video of this, this female athlete, WTA player standing on two BOSUs practicing her swings. And listen, it, it, it's not me saying this. It, it is me, but it's also the, the, the research shows that it, trying to, Trying to create power on an unstable surface is counterproductive. Stop it. You can't, you want to feel the ground. You're, we're not, unless tennis overnight changes to playing on top of a BOSU, stop it. You know? Um, <laughs> it's a new sport. Uh, yeah, it's a new sport. BOSU tennis. BOSU tennis could be fun, right? Might give go. Padel a little run for its money. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I have video, but you don't really need to, to see the video to know that when you see a, a an athlete, a player standing on a BOSU with the dome up and on it, and their legs are are you know they're they're fighting for Trembling. their life, staying on it. Yeah. yeah, you're not you're not you're not you're not working on balance. Stop it! Stop it! Even the research shows that you know for especially for elite athletes, it, it won't help with body balance. You want you want to try some balance exercises? Hey, how about this? Try that Bulgarian split squat we're ta talking about with two thirties in your hand, barefoot. You know, like yes. that's the way to do it. That's more efficient. You want to get a stronger swing, get on the ground, feel the ground and generate that power from the ground up. Because as soon as you start coming down in that eccentric phase in that first phase of, of the plyometric coming down to, you know, to build up, to build up the energy and, and the muscles and the tendons, you, you can see the, the, the legs are fighting to find it. And then the transition time to the to the concentric phase for when you come out of that is increased, and it, it can't. You want that to be that you you want that to be snap and quick, and that's what tennis is. That that swing pattern is you you set up and bang, man, you just let it rip right after. Got it, got it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> all we need to do to challenge our um, balance really is to try doing a, a one-legged RDL. I mean, that's 
especially when you introduce like a you know some dumbbells at even at lightweight that's that's hard to do for 10 reps oh it's especially hard. if you hold one because now you know i'm doing a one yeah. leg rdl i'm standing on my left leg i have the dumbbell on my in my right hand well all of a sudden now my body's being rotated inward i still have to balance mm. on my leg that's that's really difficult you know you don't need yeah. to start balancing on all this stuff now the boaster definitely has a place People will say if, if you're trying to rehabilitate, let's say, from an ankle injury. That's a whole different mm. story. Don't put a healthy body on there and start throwing the ball. It just it looks ridiculous. Yes, you may get a lot more likes on your Instagram, but the unfortunate thing. That's the most important thing, Dean. I, I understand that, and trust me. Likes I, are I, life. <clears throat> you likes, didn't know that? <laughs> yes, likes, <laughs> likes are like dopamine, right? Really gives you a good rush. Yeah. But I wish people yeah. would understand that you know keeping it simple is uh, keeping it simple and being consistent and putting effort and and mindfulness into your training is the recipe you know and it doesn't take all this balancing and stupidity that that is that <laughs> is growing on the internet and it, it it really it really bugs me that when i see uh -huh. some of these instagram pages that have hundreds of thousands of followers find this stupid exercise go oh great stuff by coach so and so i'm just like great now every kid tomorrow is going to be standing yeah. on two bosos trying to balance and guess what someone's going to fall off and hurt themselves also yeah it's interesting the human race is just conditioned to really like just like entertaining things and uh you know the the content that is you know quote unquote like boring but it, but effective oftentimes mm -hmm. uh gets gets overlooked and not liked as much so it's it's just an unfortunate you know human trait that uh a lot of yeah. us have i guess we yeah. can't really see what's effective yeah yeah interesting interesting uh so as far as like your best uh balance exercises we talked about the one-legged rdl like any other even easier ones that we can do i mean just standing on one leg like what do you think <laughs> yeah but assuming no, we're not rehabilitating <laughs> Well, even if you are rehabilitating, you should be standing on one leg, yeah. you know, barefoot. Oh, but, yeah. You know, doing 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 a, a lateral, uh, uh, doing a reverse lunge, coming down and then standing onto one leg, barefoot is good. Doing a one arm row, standing on standing barefoot, I think is really good. Mm. One thing I forgot to mention, I'm glad glad you brought this up. My whole warm up is done. Yeah, the the ten minute dynamic part, not the movement part, is mm -hmm. done barefoot. I mean, mm. when you're doing a knee hug and you're trying to come up on your toes barefoot, that's challenging. Not only is it challenging for your, for, for your balance, but guess what? Your ankle, your calf, you're going to get stronger. I mean, if your foot is the weakest part of your body, then think about, you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So your weakest link is essentially the first thing touching the ground, not what I want. Mm. So that reminded me of a commercial, you know, uh, Often you see the same commercials over and over again uh, with certain channels, but there was one where I've seen the the coach uh, advises to try playing tennis uh, without shoes on, so just have your socks on, and uh, you know I think he just like fed like did some like uh, fed and drop it um, drills or whatever, but I, I forget what he said the benefit was. But do you see a benefit to you know hitting a little bit without shoes? Like does that do anything for your your body or balance or anything like that? <clears throat> The first thing I would say is that if you do do something like that, to be sure that there's nothing on the court that's going to like <laughs> right through your foot. No, Broken but glass. It's true. Yeah, no. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's true. You know, I, I and I will say this, you know, I said at the beginning, I, I hope I'm answering your question. And if I'm not, please just, you know, call me on Sure. It. We're doing our dynamic movement barefoot. We will start doing some movement patterns barefoot okay you don't mm. want to go never doing anything barefoot to moving on a court barefoot you're asking for trouble your feet will not be ready for it that's number one right if there's something you think like i've done it a couple of times with athletes that were not moving a specific way i said you know what let's take your shoes off and see if you cross over and show me a better stop because you don't have the reliability of your shoe to save you you really have to be a little more efficient with your foot pattern, your foot placement. But it's not really something I would recommend for someone to go out there and go, 
you know what, today I think I'm going to warm up barefoot. Yeah, th this is how we're going today. Okay, so very limited, you know, practice. I mean, I wouldn't do yeah. it. I mean, I wouldn't do it. It's just not at all. Like, you know, I don't mind okay. warming up barefoot. I think that's good. But to start, mo I don't know. Listen, pe people have jogged marathons barefoot. I mean, you can build your, your strength up to a certain point, but you have to, you just got to be careful, especially like planting and trying to do a change of direction. That's where it gets a little nasty. Yeah. So it seems like, in, you know, in the four biggest mistakes that you mentioned today, I mean, really the, the running theme is that you have to keep in mind, you know, how tennis works and, you know, be specific to, uh, to what we're doing on the court. I think that's, that's kind of what people uh where they get it wrong and and, and uh i mean would you agree with that is that kind of the running theme yeah it's, it's funny you said that and I, I saw this instagram post um a week or two ago and it was lebron james and he was just standing watching and and he wrote he wrote under underneath his his picture he wrote i'm really not sure sometimes what they're training for you know, like here's mm. one of the greatest of all time watching other athletes train. And he's like, I, I'm not sure what they're training for. You know, I think there has to be a lot of different aspects um, in your training program to help you become a better athlete. Because I've always said many times, you know, I don't make tennis. I don't help become a better tennis player. I help you become a better athlete, which in turn will help you become a better uh, tennis player. And yes, you have to challenge all these different things, but to a certain point, you want to keep it within the realm of tennis, especially as the athletes get older. I mean, you have to start, if you're working with an athlete that's slow, right? Let's say I get a 16 year old athlete and he or she is slow. Well, I'm not going to start doing like ladder drills with them. That's not going to help. We have to make them more efficient. I want to make her stronger, more powerful. I want to teach her how to create more ground reaction force. I want to teach her better mechanics and change the direction direction starting split step push off it's a lot already there yeah and um you know speaking of fantastic uh exercises uh, to to follow i mean dean what is your instagram handle because you're you're posting a lot of great exercises i mean i've i've tried a bunch of them just by seeing your video so what's your handle and we'll post it on so, the show notes thanks yeah my handle is underscore baseline power underscore Mm -hmm. so and where does like that come baseline. from baseline power baseline power where does it come from yeah <laughs> uh i made i made that i made that up a while ago but i also have a video series called baseline power um and my website's called baselinepower.com so uh that that all ties in nicely but thank you <laughs> sweet sweet <laughs> I, I like the way you're trying yeah, to like I, I... hold my hand <laughs> on that one and just take <laughs> and uh, you know just <laughs> Trying to let the people know all the great stuff you're doing. Um, so any last, well, not last, but are there any other um, mistakes that have come to mind either before we started or what, during the podcast or just any other general thoughts? Yeah, I, I mean, my last one is, is, you know, I had five, literally, I guess. So the last one was recovery and the lack okay. of recovery. So. The recovery work, like uh, like the warm up, um, kind of the same thing, kind of kind of the forgotten uh, element of training. You know, if you want to be a complete player, it's not just about the time you put on the court. It's about you know you get a grade on ten, okay, great court day, but I got a three on my warm up, I got a four on my uh, on on my prehab, I got a two on my recovery. It all plays together. You want to play the best type of tennis you can, then you have to put into it. And I think in the, the recovery, people just tend to grab their bag and, and walk out and that's it, you know, sit in a car and, and go <laughs> home. And, yeah. you know, recovery has a lot of different aspects to it. It's not just the stretching or the mobility work or the foam rolling, but it's, it's the hydration, it's the nutrition and, and the sleep. I, I don't think we, we can, you know, talk enough about sleep. I think people are, sleep deprived a lot of times i know the kids get to be sleep deprived with the amount of work they put in on the court and for homework so if you know it's really great if you buy a, a theragun or your foam rolling and all this but if you're sleeping six hours a night i mean it's that's that's <laughs> the true recovery process yeah yeah uh just curious i mean do you or any of your students use like uh 
uh, tools to track sleep or anything like that? Have you found that helpful? No, we, we, that's a good question. We really haven't done that. Um, you know, there's so many other things I'm trying to implement also. And, and with, with the junior population, it can be quite, um, quite difficult to get them to buy into it because sometimes they don't see the long-term effects for doing, you know, short-term things. Like I have them filling out uh, after practice every day, just five questions, you know, how was my attitude? What was, what was my, my, my posture or my, my, um, not my posture, but, uh, uh how, how, how are you feeling or no, but you know, like how was, how, how were you walking on court? How was your body language? Oh, I see. You know, body language, okay. were you coachable? You know, just so that stays in their mind. So when they're feeling them go, yeah, maybe today, uh, you know, I wasn't intense. Uh, you know, I didn't listen to my coach when he told me or she told me what I should do and things like that. Um, really working on that aspect of, of, of a mindset of trying to show up for practice. Cause it's hard. Listen, we can't be a hundred percent every day, but if you have 80%, I want the 80% type of thing. Um, and the kids, they, you know, I think now with social media, I, I know some of them are like, yeah, I was, I was up to 11 and 12. I'm like, Oh my goodness. Like it's almost my bedtime now already at uh, nine o'clock. So, um, yeah. Gosh, when you get that old, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, <laughs> You're not partying anymore, Dean, are you? Yeah, no, 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 no. no. It's only eight thirty. No, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thirty more minutes till bedtime. Yeah. No, um, so uh, in terms of um, you know, I know we need to get our sleep, and that varies on you know your activity and your age and all that stuff. But in terms of the um, the recovery routine, it is it okay for us? to delay uh, that routine, like let's say, you know, we play a match or something and then like we drive 30 minutes home and then we conduct the re- the recovery routine, the stretching and so forth. Is that okay or is that not optimal? I, I will, well, there's a difference between optimal and okay. I would tell you that as long as you got it, you got it done, get it done. You know, that's the number okay. one thing, you know, you want to be able to, 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 I, I believe in stretching, you know, um, I think that's really beneficial. <clears throat> that's really it. And I, I had asked that same question to, uh, when I was traveling with a player a few years ago and she had to do press and, and like, they tell you, you got to do press at 640. You've got to be there for 640. Mm-hmm. And if it's only 630, when are you going to do this recovery work? So, you know, she, the, the player went to press to do the interview. So I, this physiotherapist, and I asked her because, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a great question. I said, is that a bad thing? She goes, you know what? As long as they get it done, they get it done. I think that's the most important thing. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. And, and, and so what are, like, just broadly for most people, like, what, what types of things do you like to do for recover i mean stretching is very obvious but are there any other things that you found that are really effective well, as well? For, my, for myself and there, there is quite a bit of debate about you know whether foam rolling is is worth it or not for me foam mm-hmm. rolling has helped you know i've had some some mm. some issues that you know i've rolled uh, my quads my knees have felt better and i've actually seen it with with the kids also you know especially going through some of the growth spurts you know, rolling the muscle, it, 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 it is, it is helped. That's, that's, <clears throat> I'm sorry, that's really good. Um, I do have a Theragun, uh, you know, that mm-hmm, I use too. occasionally too, which I love. So that helps also. I, I don't do the cold, hot baths or anything like that. It's just, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing that, but, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I will start, I will start after my workouts, I will start with I'll have a shake, you know, right away to, to help me recover from my workout. I mean, I'm not competing anything, but if I go and I work out, whether it's cardiovascular work or if I'm in the gym within minutes, I'm, I'm on that right away and I'm stretching and, and, and having a shake at the same time. What is the, uh, that takes a lot of skill, by the way, stretching and having the shake. (laughs) You need to be very balanced. I imagine. It's one big, big straw. Don't worry. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, good. Uh, it's just curious actually with the shake. I mean, I don't know if this is like proprietary here, but what, what's the general composition of it? Maybe carbs, protein or what you're putting in it or. or So what I'm doing right now 
ice. <laughs> no, so I'll mm. put ice cubes. I put in um, collagen also, mm. collagen in there. I put in a protein powder that is more oriented towards athletics, so it will have a lot of the amino acids. Um, I will put in berries for antioxidants. Um, I'll throw in maybe a banana in there too. And then I'll use an almond milk to really create like a more of a milkshake than a smoothie. Mm, yeah. Very good. Very like good. It. That's funny. <laughs> you caught it. <laughs> Smart man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I put one more thing in it now and I, for life of me, I, I can't remember what it is. I can see it's small. Is that because it's illegal? Is that no, why? Oh, no, no, no. Just these, <laughs> these small little black Z beads. Zeroids. <laughs> uh, little black beads. What are Be they called? Um, little black beads. Beads. Uh, it, it's, uh, anyways, I'm sorry. I truly, truly just. Uh, caviar? Yeah, but, but it's like caviar, <laughs> but it's hot. But it's really, it's good in omega-3s and, and really healthy. So hmm. I put that in there too. Oh, is it chia seeds? Yes, or thank you very much. Yeah. You're the man. Yes. Love it. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. Thanks for the clapping. Yeah, yeah I actually yeah, put that yeah. in my uh, breakfast usually yeah. if I have oatmeal or, or yeah. something. Yeah, exactly. Cereal, yeah. yeah. But the collagen yeah. is something yeah, not... new with polypeptide. I mean, it, and I don't know if it's psychosomatic or what, but my joints are feeling a little better. And uh, so, <clears throat> so it works. Nice. As Just... long as it works. Yeah, yeah. T totally random question. I don't know how oh. many people this will help, but the, the, the collagen, does that have shellfish in it? <laughs> Do you know? Um, that's a good question. I'm not. I. I that's do okay. Not Don't worry. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. No, but from what I read on the label, it's. Um, I. I don't think. Why are you allergic to sh uh, shellfish? Yes, I am. And yeah, peanuts. I don't, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it. Uh, it, it. It's. Uh, I think it's okay for everybody. Yeah. I think. Don't. Yeah. Don't, don't go try it and then blame me, please. Yeah, I, that would be very shellfish of you. Sorry, uh, another one. <laughs> please wow. don't, please That's don't leave. Within don't two leave. Minutes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, I, uh, I'm pretty bad with that stuff. The puns, I love them. Yes. Um, you yes, good stuff. I'm sorry, everybody. We got. <laughs> oh my lord, we're having you back next week. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Awesome, Dean. So th this has been fantastic. Uh, so I think we've hit our five. Um, any last thoughts on, on the last one or just anything in general to help our audience? You know, on the last one, go in, like stretch, stretch out some areas, you know, like stretch out your shoulders, stretch out your hips, your calves, uh, your mm -hmm. rotation. Do you, help your body, help your body help you. I mean, the more you help your body, the, the, the better tennis you're going to play. And you know, it, the tennis, especially the higher level you are, it's your vehicle. It's your instrument. Your body's taking you where you want to go. Treat it right. And if it takes a little extra time, spend that time because that's, that's, that's what success is about. It's about sacrifice. And because you're sacrificing an extra 10, 15 minutes in the gym, so be it. I mean, that's, you know, the ones that want, get it done and, and, and do what it's supposed to do. And, and those that, that turn their back on it, it ends up biting them in the butt anyways. And last, lastly, keep it simple, stupid. I mean, the kiss principle, I, you know, just train, go in there, train well, train, train hard. Doesn't have to be fancy. You don't need all this big equipment, you know, dumbbells and a pulley system and, you know, elastic bands, even if you want to, you can get a lot of stuff done. Um, doesn't have to be, you know, that complicated. Yeah. I love that. One last pun for you. Um, I train so hard that when I travel, I only use the train. Okay, that was bad. That was real bad. That you was... know, you should have just left it. Everybody was hopefully somewhat laughing. Now people just clicked off. At that yeah, they're point. just yeah. angry. They're angry. They're going to leave zero star reviews. Um, yes. So he... <laughs> that's not possible, though, actually. Thank God. Um, so one thing with the uh, with with stretching, I was curious. Um. Do you have any students that, and I don't even know if this is a thing, honestly, like people who are like, they would be hurt by stretching too much. Is that, is that a thing with you people who are get, too You do budget? get some people that are hyper mobile and there really is uh -huh. no need to stretch. You know, you want to strengthen. I, I've had kids with, you know, hypermobility problems and 
and the wrists uh-huh. or, or the elbows or the shoulder and and yeah you got to be careful with that that you know you want to you want to discuss things with a physiotherapist someone that that probably has a better handle on that stuff than than uh, you know uh, i would um but I, I would stay away from stretching it and just being sure that it's strong and able to you know resist uh resist any of the demands put on it put on the joint by by the sport gotcha thanks dean um so uh any last thoughts i, I keep asking these broad questions but like a- any last pieces of advice to uh to help our audience improve their tennis fitness you know what i think it's like anything else Maraben. get into a habit of doing it do mm-hmm. do small amounts start 10 minutes start small. whatever it yeah. is just start Huge. small don't go don't go big you're you're just asking build a habit yeah just and build the habit and then you're like huh oh yeah i gotta do that before i get on court like it just becomes part of you and and if you're late you know what okay so you lose 10 minutes of of practice time it's fine you're doing yourself a favor you're going to be better prepared for your lesson you're you're, you're going to be warmed up your nervous system's going to be firing your muscle t- muscle tissue will be ready for for the sport so so take the time do it stick to it and i promise i really do it it, it will definitely pay off yeah it's it's going to pay off in spades so i mm-hmm. uh, love that um, Dean, so I know we mentioned a few places for, for people to check out, but, um, any other, you know, uh, social media handles yeah. or, or, you know, thing that you want to mention? Yeah. So I'm on Instagram a lot again at, um, underscore baseline power underscore that that's my main focus. I really enjoy posting there. I get really, you know, I've got to know people through Instagram. So I, I really enjoy that. I, I like helping people. I want to help people do the right thing and and learn how to do it and not waste their time doing stupidity like standing on a boat so sorry and um you know i i do also i give a class every tuesday thursday at noon online at 12 o'clock eastern time um you know it's a small fee to join in first one's free all you have to do is just you know send me a send me a message on Instagram or go to my website called baseline power and you can send me a, a you know, an email from there. It'd be great to have people join that class. The class has been going on ever since COVID started. I mean, that's uh, you know, we have a, we have a great little group of people that get together, enjoy it. We're, you know, it's not big. It's anywhere from five to eight people every Tuesday, Thursday. And we work on tennis specific things. We work out, we work on foot movement. We do some foot patterns a lot of fun yeah it's a lot of fun for sure and uh you know i've dean and i've been doing some live workouts like i mentioned in the past and and he's fantastic and uh but you know it's really cool to hear that for a long while you know some some people from the summit had joined that class that you did and uh they've been there for a while i don't don't know if they're still there but but that's that's fantastic so yeah um one of them just said to me too and i mean i'm i'm you know i'm patting myself on the shoulder here but she said you know i've never been so fast on on the court you know she's a she's a 5-0 player she i've never been so fast on the court or four five five oh player something like that and she's Mm -hmm. i've never been so fast on the court it's helped me tremendously understanding what the movement patterns are yeah, that's what happens when you you find a great coach. And and speaking of, you know, one other question too, like for you know, if people don't live in Montreal and uh, you know, maybe they just want, in addition to coming to your class, you know, maybe they also want to find a coach like who they can see and all that. Do you have any advice on uh, how to find a, a really good coach that can elevate your tennis fitness? Well, first of all, I would say that you can always contact me and we can do a Zoom training session, which has become very right. popular. And, you know, COVID's been a terrible, terrible thing. One of, you know, if you want to call it a positive thing, is that I, I've worked now with people literally all over the world. You know, people awesome. from all over the States, Canada, London, Turkey, india uh, australia i mean it's just really branched out singapore so i'm, I'm very fortunate yeah. with that how do you find wow that is that's a great question i get that a lot where you know i had this one father talking with last week um from san diego going 
yeah, we went to a couple of these speed places, but they're not really thinking tennis. They're really teaching more like baseball, football type of stuff, you know, and, mm. and, um, it, it's not easy. It's not easy to find somebody, but you know, you can go through the ITPA. Uh, I think, you yep. know, if you're ITPA certified, uh, you have a good base knowledge. I would definitely would want someone to be also uh, a certified strength and conditioning specialist because, you know, if you're good, you should be able to train almost anybody in almost any sport. It's just you have to understand the sport, what the requirements are, and what to train to make that person better. Love it, Dean. Awesome. Well, I think we have reached the end of the road just for today, my friend. Yes. Um, but I, I do want to thank you very much for coming on to the podcast. It's always fun, and uh, we have great conversations, if I do say so myself. Um, so I do want everybody to definitely check out uh, baselinepower.com and, uh, and Dean's Instagram at underscore baselinepower underscore and definitely check out his class as well that he does. Yeah. And you said it was Tuesday, 12 p.m. Eastern? Tuesday, Thursdays. Tuesday, 12, Thursdays, yeah, 12 p.m. Tuesday, Eastern. Thursdays, 12, 12 o'clock Eastern time. Perfecto. Noon lunch, yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> sweet, sweet. Awesome, Dean. Any last words before we, uh, uh, you know, Yeah, the uh, very, stop very last episode? words. People are going, first of all, <laughs> Thank you for having me on. It was it was a complete pleasure. I love the way Same. this goes because it's you know we're two friends. Uh, people should know we know each mm -hmm. other, um, and it's just two friends talking shop about something that we're both passionate about. I'm extremely mm -hmm. flattered every time that you you have me on, and I'm humbled by that. So thank you for that. Um, and I, I don't think it can be understated how much work you do for tennis and, 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 you know, the community, whether it's for players, parents, or, or coaches, the amount of work that you've done and everything that is there for people to grab. I mean, do it. I mean, you, you have great guests, you do a great job and, and it's fun. It's just fun. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, my friend. And uh, yeah, just thanks to uh, wonderful, kind uh, experts like yourself that uh, I'm able to, you know, create this, uh, this show and other content. So uh, thanks again, Dean. We will be in touch very soon. Really enjoyed it today. And everybody definitely check out Dean at BaselinePower.com and check out that class. I think you're yeah. going to really enjoy it um, and, and do some privates with Dean. He's, uh, he's top notch and has trained uh, professional players, amateur players, juniors. So he really knows his stuff. Uh, he's got a billion certifications, I think. So uh, check him out. And uh, thank you again, Dean. And we'll chat soon. Thank you, buddy. Thanks. Great job. You too. All right. I really hope that you enjoyed part two of my interview with Coach Dean Hollingworth and that you learned a lot about movement training and the mistakes that we make when we train for our agility and when we train our footwork and the proper way to train our power generation from the ground up and then how to properly recover. And if you enjoyed this episode, I really would appreciate it very much if you would leave a review for the Tennis Files podcast and you can do that on Apple Podcasts by going to tennisfiles.com slash Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app of choice. And I think we're very close to 100 reviews uh, or ratings maybe, so I would really appreciate it if you would leave a review for the show. And I would like to leave you with a quote, as I often do at the end of the show, and this one is by Rumi. And Rumi said, It's your road and yours alone. Others may walk it with you, but no one can walk it for you really love this quote because it really introduces accountability and that ultimately you're the one that is seizing the day, hopefully, and forging your own path. No one else can do that for you. They can guide you and give you advice and all that, but ultimately, ultimately it's you. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, and I don't get any kickback from this or anything, but Dean hosts two tennis-specific fitness classes per week online that you can join. They are on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 p.m. Eastern time. So just shoot Dean a DM uh, at underscore baseline power underscore on Instagram or just contact him at baselinepower.com. And with that, 
I really do want to thank you for listening to the podcast. We've got some great interviews coming up that have already been recorded and will be published every Wednesday, as you know. So really appreciate your support and kind messages and encouraging words to me. So thanks a lot. Have a great week. Keep improving your game just a little bit every day and you'll see the huge compounding effect in due time and have a great one. I'll see you next week. This is Mirban signing out.